The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman here. This is Thursday, January the 25th, and we're looking at a market that just, I mean, look, here's IBM. Look at that spectacular move in IBM. And, and for a year, I've been saying IBM's the comeback kid um, and uh, didn't go long. Uh, just I'm not sure even why. Uh, well, one of the reasons is we chose Microsoft as the kind of go-to that embraces everything. Uh, okay, that's the way it is. But it was a spectacular move. Look, up $20 at 193 um, A fantastic move in IBM. Now, let's just go through these numbers again. Uh, the reason why I say to subscribers is that although we, are, uh, we have no short positions, we have, we have long positions, we have long positions at all different price ranges, um, I'm, I'm getting a little bit... Something inside me, and it's just maybe maybe this is the problem with being having you know being in the market or at least studying it in great detail. I'm right in the forest. I can't see the forest for the trees, or I'm right in the trees. I can't see the forest. But my my gut is saying, with these on balance volumes as they are, look here's the on balance volume in the Dow. It made a high at exactly. The 38,109 high of all time high of the 22nd of January. It's pulled back a little bit, and the stochastic is at 81%. Unlike the SP, let me just show you this is the left side chart, that's where the daily chart is. The, the SP is at 92%. The weekly chart of the SP is 95% and flat. The monthly chart is 86%. The QQQ, one, two, three, there we go, QQQ, the on-balance volume is extremely overboard, but the stochastic is at 92% and flat. I, I have a difficult time finding reason to short when you've got a flat stochastic, not over above 80 or 85%, not over 90%, but holding at the 92% level and not showing any deterioration. And the MACD, the histogram, is still expanding. So that just says to me, before you decide to short, look at leadership, look at the, um, forget the emotional part of it, stay with, the, stay with what you're looking at. You remember yesterday I showed you these charts right here based on the black background. <clears throat> Simple, just there's nothing more simple than this using a nine period moving average over the 14 uh, period moving average. Uh, yes, the SMH is today up to 20, 194.61. So, but in trying to time a reversal, there are many things to look at. But I, in terms of the stretch above the nine period moving average, this is the furthest we've been at any potential peak. And I only say potential peak. Mm -mm, let me just go back here. Even this potential peak way back here. Oh, it doesn't go back that far. Why should? Why shouldn't it? 2022. And on this chart, I'm just going to go back much further. Uh, let me do this right now. Another acceleration in the S&P having gone from 49.11, just in, in, a, in an eye blink to the 40. 49.21 level. So here we are. So what I'm looking at here is, uh, let's go to two years back. No, I'm going to go to, yeah, why not? 2008. And let's just go 20 years back. 20 years back. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, where, when before will we be that far above the nine period moving average? Well, here's one. I don't know what the date is. That's March of 2022. There's a whole series of, of this, this kind of spiky tops all the way here back in 2021. So, and that's the SMHs. And you remember, as far as I'm concerned, SMHs lead markets up, lead markets down. So, 
at this particular point, just on a visual basis, I haven't done any mathematical basis, although I'm pretty sure that the mathematical basis will say we're up there in terms of excessiveness. The distance between the nine period moving average and the price itself is one of the greatest distances. Does that mean that you have to tumble? No, it does say that you could start a chop, chop, choppy phase that goes, let's give them a, a semiconductors um, 200 as a high. We're at 194. Let's just go up to the 200 level up there. Actually, we just go 198, another three, four points. Um, it does say that you could have a huge sideways consolidation, which is something that actually have internal high, residual high, internal high, residual high, internal high, residual high. It happens so many times that we could get that here. So all it does, uh, going into, say, February, maybe it pulls back in next week, going into the first full week of February, and then you make a lower high, and then you start a February pull. I'm, I'm suspecting from everything I'm looking at that we, there's a really good chance that we see some kind of a February um, consolidation. All right, I'm not saying smash to the downside, anything like that. I'm just saying consolidation. Now, the other rule of thumb that I have, this goes back historically, is that when you are looking at the stochastic flat in the 95 or higher oh, area, where did, oh, did I write that down? No way. I think it was, oh, no. There, there was a 120-minute chart with the stochastic at 100%. I have never seen that in the, I, I would like to say hundreds of thousands but I would say at least the half a million charts that I've looked at, and let's just make it even the, lo the last uh, 20 years. Um, I don't think I've ever seen 100%, and I was about to write it down. Did I write it down? No, I forgot to write it down. Oh, my goodness, how dumb. Um, gosh, what a pity. Um, 100%, I, I've never seen that. And the resu result is that at some point, that 100%, or at least 98 97%, does start to move down. And when it moves down, very often it goes all the way to the 20% level. So that's why I'm saying, I'm thinking over the next couple of weeks, we're going to see some digestion of these big, big gains. And I'm just calling it a digestion. I, at this point, to call it anything else, we are seeing deflation. Now, what's interesting about deflation is, if you look at the DBA, which is the DB Agricultural Fund. We are still long from the 13s. It's trading right here, 2137. Um, even though the grains and, and the, the, the soft commodities, were act, and so this includes sugar, were acting very poorly and had a tremendous decline from the high that was made at that peak E-top at about 2240-something back in November, went down all the way to the 20.10, was it? 20.39 level, 20.39 on the 8th of January. So that's saying that the commodities, if you look at the monthly chart on the right, still holding pretty high. So, um, but there has been a deflationary aspect and a lot of things that we're hearing about suggest that there's some kind of a deflation. But you know, you go to the supermarket, you go anywhere. Look at the automobile prices. The average cost of an automobile today is 48,000. Don't tell me this inflation thing. Now, there's something else that I have to talk about, and that is points. People are choosing to get the extra uh, extra goodies on the cars. That's why the prices are high. I'll be back. Dow's up 187. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So I thought I'd just do this uh, during the break. I thought it would be appropriate to do this uh, every evening. So this is something, if you're a futures trader, e-mini futures, especially the S&P futures, you've got to learn this pattern. And this pattern can save you a fortune. Why? Because it's in the evenings from the 4 o'clock close or just before the 4 o'clock close or sometimes just after the 4 o'clock close, Eastern time, the market stays in a narrow rectangle formation, which it did from the uh, 3 o'clock to just after 4 o'clock uh, move in the E-mini yesterday around the 200 period exponential moving average, this orange line right here. And look, in a narrow range, I mean, we're talking about basically, uh, let's look at that, it's 48.93, it's called a 48.93 as a low. And it was, the high did become 49.04. Uh, so um, we're, we're really talking about a very narrow trading range. 40, is that correct? 48, yeah, basically 48.93 to 48, 48, 93, to 49.03, 10 points after the spectacular moves we see. And then you got the sudden news at 8.30 this morning and whoosh, pull back, didn't break the, the rectangle low and then spiraled way above the high. And now the nine period moving average in the 10 minute chart is strong and that just says, hey, uh, there's a chance that yesterday it failed at a peak C. That was unusual, but I, I did go over it almost immediately after I saw that it was a C, and I said, uh-oh, there's a, a two-bar parallel high right here. I'm calling that a, a, a phantom peak at 49.30.50 at 12.20 uh, yesterday afternoon, and then 12.30 uh, was the next one. But the five-minute chart gave a beautiful peak D, and that was it. And now look at this. I drawn in a cup formation a little earlier on. I don't know if anyone in the den saw me do this to say there's a good chance we're going to go back to that high. And now we've gone just look at this rectangle, a same thing. So these big rallies that move now from this new 830 high, look, we're in basically a rectangle formation. Now we're making a chance of a leg D in the one minute chart, another 25 cents. So it'll do that. So Keep in mind that patterns are really important. 
But even more important is the strength in the next time frame um, to hold the positions. And here you're in leg D. This is a leg E. Is it an E or is it a brand new C in the five-minute chart? No problem. You don't have to even worry about that because the 9 is way above the 14. And this is the pattern that I've been using for about a year now to, to, to try to codify my two-click session. And that says early in the morning, it could be 6.30, it could be the 8.30 news event at uh, Eastern Time. There's a chance that you get a, ch a chance to go click once on your e-money futures or whatever you're trading, if you're able to trade pre-market, whatever vehicle. And you could hold it for a long time, sometimes all the way into the close of the day or after the close. But the ob object is to hold it as long as possible until you get really strong signs of weakness, and that would be the nine period moving average turning negative, which it did yesterday right here, right there, that big red candle, right there at 1340, that's 140 uh, in the afternoon. And in this particular instance, holding long is the way to be until it changes. A nice, easy technique. Now, using that particular technique, what I was about to do was to go and say, <clears throat> look at this, um, right here, right here. This has all the technical indicators. There's the MACD, the stochastic, this is the Dow chart, uh, Dow's up 212, and the on-balance volume, the green line, and the nine-period moving average. This is the one that is almost always the most important. Yes, I use the on-balance volume. Uh, look at this low right here. That was the exact low on the 27th of October where you got a V-shaped turnaround in the on-balance volume. There, everyone talks about the indicators as being lagging indicators. There is nothing lagging about an indicator that gives you an exact. It doesn't do it always. No, it doesn't. Yeah, do you have to use other indicators to confirm? Well, immediately after that, you do. But look at that. And even this is unusual. Look at this. This is the the 27th of October. And the look at that. The yellow line, the faster moving average in the in the stochastic, moves, gives a V-shaped turnaround, and the very next session crosses positive, crosses a slow moving average. So don't always think that the textbook scenario of saying, oh, uh, moving averages are by their very nature lagging. No, that's not true at all. Most of the time it's true, but there are times when it isn't. So why am I saying I didn't want to do anything negative because the market at this particular point is still suggesting that there should be higher prices. So what I was saying is the DBA, Agricultural Fund, is still up in the higher range and it's actually almost filled in the huge gap from, oh, that was a dividend gap. I remember we got a dividend. So that's it on the 15th, the week of the 15th of December is trading at a low of 21.61. And the very next week is trading at with a high of 23.11. And that's because of the dividend. So this is not an accurate reflection of the price because it does include the dividend. So um, within that context, yes, We've had some deflationary aspect in um, some of the, the agricultures. Try to find that in the supermarket. I don't think so. Okay, let's get back to the market now. I wanted to, I have a question that came in. Yes, question came in. Let me get to that. So let me just finish up here. I'm going to do this really quickly because we're getting to the last week of January. So the, the weekly chart made a higher high in the um Weekly chart of the Dow. So this is still a leg A. It means that all of next week, if there's no new high on whatever the high is this week in the Dow, so far it's 38,109. I actually have to give it to you to the penny because if it goes one, one penny higher, one uh, 38,109.20. If it goes next week, if it goes to 21, if it hasn't done that this week, 0.21 or higher, that extends leg A for the 13th week. I think it's the 13th. And look at this leg seen the day. I want you to do this real quickly here, SPX, because um, today's action, I think, is really important. Where we close today, is, I, I, we're going to have to assess this 
in a certain uh, a predetermined way. And the predetermined way is look at all the technicals, try to exclude your uh, emotions, and then break down to the 120-minute charts because that's what's going to give you a clue. And the 120-minute chart of the S&P right now is a peak A, peak B, peak C. It needs to go one penny above um, 4903.68 and that'll to 6.69 SARS leg D. That, that, yep, that's the way we're looking at it. Okay, the QQQ 120 minute chart. Peak C also needs just a little pop to the upside and then we get a leg D. And at that point, it either extended for today, leg D in the day, or it'll make an E. And then we've got to be a little bit careful. So I'll be back in a moment. Dow's up 187, SP's up 27, Basil Chapman, Tiger Conditions out. I'll get to all the questions as soon as we return. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. I had a question. I'll get to it in a moment. Uh, could I look at... Uh, there we I'll find it. Could I look at the IBD uh, stocks, some of the stocks? And I'll get to that. So first of all, I want you to show you, look, so the QQQs, look at that strong leg up. It's not, just visually it says, yeah, it could be fine to have a bit of a digestive phase. What would take it back into at 428? What would take it back into the four, uh, 410 to 400 area? It has to be some kind of news. And so far, 
the stocks that count like a now. Where did I type that? Uh oh, I never, I never like that when I'm typing. Uh, uh, there, okay, there it is. N O W, N O W, N O W. Why is that not showing up? There it is. Okay, N O W. Uh, leg C, huge move, huge move to the upside, up 10 today at 773. This is a leg B in the weekly chart. I, I don't see any other way that I can count that. I, I suppose I could. No, I'm going to call it a B. And uh, leg C in the weekly in the monthly chart, service now, cloud uh, auto management, workflows, IT uh, services, just everything that you want to see came up with good news. So that's acting extremely well. And that's leadership, new all-time high. So when you put this together with um, areas like HACK, which is the um, the, the prime cybersecurity ETF, uh, not it's under the 67.97 November 2021 high, although it went from 67 down to 40. Uh, here it is at uh, 63. And um, just for, just to be, Going with the technicals, which are all very positive. I'm calling that a D slash A, and this will have to be, I'm calling this a B for now. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but right now everything's positive. There's no reason at 92%. So that's hack. This is a prime security. And in that, you've got Palo Alto Networks, Palo Alto Networks, there it is, P A and W. <clears throat> and that's important. Oh, I haven't, oh, I've done, oh look at this. Chapman Wave Roman Candlelist is right there. Well, um, this is back when it was a pre-split. I love it. You see the way, look, you see that peak D? That meant that the price was there once upon a time. And then it got split and it came down here. So this is now a brand new move to the upside leg. B in the monthly chart. Palo Alto Networks, one of the great cyber companies. And where is it? It's at 300 and uh, it hit a higher in the three. What was that? Did it hit 350? I think it just missed it. Doji Candle 3. Yep, 350.60 on the 22nd, four days ago, four sessions ago, I should say. And lo and behold, um, that is almost where it was pre-split. It's amazing how these stocks can do that. So as I'm looking at it, um, there's still internal strength in some of the sectors. But there isn't in others. And that just makes me a little bit worried. Yes, your peak D in the one-minute chart. This is leg E going to a peak E in the uh, E-mini. I thought someone asked me, could I just have a quick look at it? Yep, I will. Um, is this a sell signal? Well, it failed at a peak C when the uh, five-minute chart was at a D yesterday. Um, it went to an E and it's pulling back. But the technicals in the 10-minute chart are still strong. But going on the five minute, one-minute and five-minute chart, I'm saying just be careful. At 49.19, if it closes for two bars under 4.10, the 49.05, 200-period exponential moving average in the five-minute chart will be the target. There's room to go just a little higher to the 49.28 level. That's going to be a resistance. So that's why I, so I, I thought I'd do that quickly. Uh, most importantly so. Here we go. I want you to, before we get to the Investors Daily stocks, I want you to just talk about uh, the GDX. So the GDX is um, up 37 cents at 28.07. My contention has been for months now, uh, since uh, October, actually, October, November, December, January, almost for four months, is that I don't see anything in the gold area to have it have an intermediate term rally. I see spikes, etc., but I don't see anything more than that. Why do I say that? Because I think that the whole um, the, the whole scenario of the Middle East with I Israel is that the kind of equipment that they would need, airplanes, all that sort of thing, is not here needed. It's uh, it's a ground it's a ground attack that's going on right now. I'm talking about this only in terms of gold. Uh, and, and in terms of gold, gold gold would have been the, the go-to place. It's the, it's the insurance policy for the Mideast. Whenever there's a problem, then geopolitically you will see 
gold screaming to the upside and then holding those gains and making higher highs. This is just not doing that, but it's not breaking down. And that says to me that gold is holding okay as an independent unit. That is, it is not being um, it is not being accelerated to the upside at all yet. So that to me says that the GDX, which is the miners, if the miners are leading, it means that the demand for gold is active, not emotional, that it's there. And I don't see that. So that's what I want you to just do. Someone said, could you just clarify your feeling on gold? Silver something different. Silver's just chart pattern wise. Um, it's also holding okay, but it really, at this point, what happens is gold will suddenly spike and then silver will play catch up and then surpass gold. And then gold will turn around and say, hey, wait a minute, wait for me. And then when they're both going up together, that's when you get your sharpest decline. So at this particular point, silver's acting poorly, gold is acting poorly. Um, but I don't rule them out because individual companies, gold companies or silver companies, could be having something different, but they aren't dependent on the actual price of gold at this particular point. And if you're looking at the dollar, look at this, the dollar, where is it now? It's up 22 ticks at 103.45. It got repelled at the 200 period moving average, but look at that indicator of last resort, the nine period over the 14, fabulous. The MACD's goods, the CASTIC's at 80%, on the uh, relative strength is okay, it's not great. So go, dollar is still in play, um, but it's not really accelerating above the 200 period moving average, 103.74. It needs 104.35 to say, you know what, I'm going for all the, I'm going to the higher side of this particular rally. At this point, it's stalling consolidation for about two weeks. Now, the other thing I want to look at was, where did it go, where did it go? Um, yes, so the IAI, this is to me a big clue. If the IAI, the iShares broker dealer and security ETF <clears throat> after the spectacular November, December to January move. It's had four weeks now of stalling. If this indicator trading at 105.73, I call it an indicator. If, if it starts at any point on any day, it doesn't even have to be uh, uh, over a, looking at the weekly close or anything. On any day, if it touches 112 in the next two, three weeks, I think that's going to be spectacular for the market. It hasn't done that. It's kind of stalled over here. And I'm putting the XLF, which is the financials, in the same category. Acting really nicely um, at 38.41, the S&P Select Financial Spider Fund. At 38.40, if it goes to 40.25, that's it. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's up 81. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So just uh, let me do this. I, I, meant, I meant to have a look. I'll do this right now. So every once in a while, uh, let me just put down a question. When does SOXS split? Uh, first split for stocks took place February 24, 2011. This is the one for five reverse split. When did, how does, when can stock, what is, yeah, announces, oh, there it is. Uh, direction announces reverse of February the 18th, 2022. Don, why don't I have it updated? Um, Socks reverse. Ah, oh, there it is. Reverse split 2024. Uh, Socks' eighth split took place on March 28th, 2022. This is one for the. Oh, man. Uh, which share split in 2024? Ah, oh, there it is. Um, it tells you. Nope, nope, nope. Old. Uh, split date is. 25-1, 2024. Oh, January the 24th. Oh, that's today. So that says, um, I don't know if that's the SOXS. Some of them do. So you've got to be careful. Now, I offer, I look at this over the years and years and years. Um, the SOXS and the SPXS, these are three times short. One is the short, the, uh, oops, one is short, the semiconductors. The other is short, the, um, S and P, S P X S. <clears throat> so here it is trading at eight, at ten point eight three. <clears throat> I remember having looked at this over and over and over. I think I still have. In fact, I don't know what it is. Back in twenty eighteen, I think it was twenty eighteen. Um, I was going over. I was going to Australia. I think that's where it was. And I bought some a position in the was it the SPXS something like the SPXS, and um, just as protection. Except I was uh, I didn't really I couldn't really do anything with it, and it worked out fantastically. There was a pullback, but by the time I came back, there was this big reversal, and the darn thing had shrunk. And I don't think I ever did anything with it. I just said, oh, well, that's the way it is. Um, today, it must be worth like uh, 10 cents or something like that. Why? Because, look, this, this S&P, once upon a time, was – oh, wrong one. Let me expand that. Do this one. Look at this. You won't believe it. They call them trading vehicles. They tr call them trading vehicles for a reason. Now, we still have a SDOW three times long from October 2022, and that's still doing really nicely. But that's crazy. I mean, I did it, but it's silly. Look at this. This was once at 150,000, 160,000, actually over 160,000. So years ago, in, in one of our meetings that we had down in Florida, I had – uh, someone who traded at Goldman Sachs and he had just left Goldman Sachs. I didn't know all this. I usually don't ask all these questions. Someone else told me about it. 
And um, and then in the class, this is one of my two day, three day specials where I do two days is the initial chapter wave methodology, and the third day is, is advanced, and we actually do in live practicing. Um, he said to me, he and his friend at Goldman Sachs had their own portfolios. Everybody's allowed their own portfolios. And then when the bosses saw what they had and they were short, they made a terrible fuss. And these guys decided, you know what, we could do better on our own. And they just left. And he told me that his friend is short at all. There weren't that many at the time. All the both long and short three times vehicles. And all of them were making money. And you can see why. This is at 160-something thousand. And every time they split it, look where we are. We're down to $10.82. And they're going to split it for 10 whatever it is. Is it 10 for 1? Something like 10 for 1. <laughs> and it's at $10. So it's fun when you're able to do that. We were able to do that with the socks in the, in the, um, at some point three times short the, SM, the SMHs and had some nice gains. But another socks is down at four dollars and forty nine cents, and you look at it and say, "Oh, come on!" At four forty nine, I could easily short that. Well, you could have said that at five nineteen, you could have said that at uh, six forty two, and you got uh, a fifty percent decline. So no, you've got to be really careful. Your timing has to be pretty perfect. All right. So I just wanted to talk about that because uh, um, this thing could split at any point, and then you're kind of stuck. You know, you've got something that looks fantastic. You've got, say, um, maybe you bought a thousand shares at four dollars. You've spent forty six hundred, whatever it is, um, and suddenly it gets split, and you look at it and you say, "Wait, I've got a forty dollar, one forty dollar, forty dollar share, or something like that." So it's really tough. All right. With that said, let me just go to this right now. Um, so I was asked about where did I put it? Uh oh, did I just mess up? No, I didn't. Okay, there it is. So this is the Investors Business Daily, uh, IBD 50 stock list. This is the GCT it has, NVIDIA. I wish I'd looked at this more often. I, I have, I mean, I've been good. I love the newspaper. I love the serendipity of turning a page and seeing something that you weren't even looking for. I just don't get that here. I don't know what it is. But I'm not very good at this electronic newspaper stuff. I get, I get, but I don't, I don't think I use them as well as I do the actual paper. That's just, a, you know, older generation tends to do that. So let's just look at this. I don't know if I've notated GCT, but let's just go there. So, whoops, what happened? Oh, wrong one. GCT. Here we go. So, GCT is uh, Giga. Oh, I have got Giga Cloud. That's not an A. That's, that should be an I. Giga Cloud technology. Uh, Leg C in the monthly chart had a low of 863 in, in November of 2022. Had a round number high of 62 uh, back in 2022. Uh, this is I'm calling this a peak B in the weekly chart, the peak deconsolidation. So it's in a consolidation. It has a spectacular move. Now it's consolidating. NVIDIA is number two. NVIDIA had a spectacular earnings result, and now it's trading at uh, G slash C. It should maybe make the leg D above yesterday's high. And then I wouldn't be surprised if it has a little digestive phase. Look at that on-balance volume in the day chart. But that stochastic is at 95%. At some point, in the next six to eight weeks, that stochastic is going to come down and it's going to be under 20%. How do we, if it does that, how do we deal with it and what do we do? Well, that's going to be the question. Crowd. Oh, I mean, these are spectacular. So this crowd. Uh, as we're speaking, it, uh, A, B, C, it's a new leg, uh, C, uh, crowd, strike, holding cybersecurity, uh, 298.28 was a high in November, plunges down to 100, and now it's three times high. It's at 299.89. Uh, so it's making a new all time high as we speak. Is this a G or is it an alternative account G slash C? Just for safety's sake, I'm putting G slash C on a purely technical basis. Nothing here says this should not be a C. But I like to say this is an instant, re instant restart right here. So you, uh, whenever there's an instant restart, I have to put the double count. And that's just the rule. It just gives you that security. But the 9 and the weekly chart is way over the 14. MACD's good stochastics at 93%. I don't want to go through them all, but you can see what I'm doing here. DKNG is number, what is that, number 4 on the list. Uh, DKNG is DraftKings trading at 38.64. I, I must mention we are along this position. Uh, leg 
I'm calling this a B in the daily chart. Had a round number 40 yesterday. And the weekly chart is in leg C, and the monthly chart is in a very deep. I'll back it up on the cows at 39. SP's up 17. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. So, yeah, actually, a couple of people asked me, could I do a little bit more uh, tomorrow, technical Friday, on some of those IBD 50 stocks? Yeah, I'll do that. And um, so, most importantly, what I am looking at here, I said to subscribers, I don't know what it is. I'm just, I'm getting this little nervous feeling. For two days now, I've been wanting to add back to the shorts 
especially in the Dow, just to go short the Dow. I've held off. Um, it's such a mixed market. I don't know how it's going to work out because the strength on the stocks that are strong is amazing. But look at this. I put this for my daily newsletter. I always have the Dow chart, uh, and I, I give a little synopsis of what I'm looking at here. And then I have my uh, um, my uh, daily, the actual trading position. So that's our, my trader's corner with all our positions. But all I said was, if the Dow starts to give bad gains today and goes for plus and starts to go minus, I'd be kind of careful here because not everything is great, but the Dow is only this, I'm saying, is only 30 stock. The other, other index is holding quite well. But this is kind of a leading indicator. Just say, just on a near term, be a little cautious. Say, Jim, for